Good morning. How are y'all? I am doing fine this morning. So glad you could be here. Let me click a couple of buttons while we're getting started here. I have all my materials ready. I just had to move some of the equipment around. You see the sun starting to cast in on me. So I have my little trifold up in the background and I'm really super excited about bringing you this project today. And let me tell you why. I'll pop this up on the screen. So if you pop in, say good morning, tell me hello, let me know you're here. I'm gonna roll right in front of the camera so I can get the fan on me. And I'm not gonna lie, I know we're supposed to have evergreen content, but I, I can't even lie to you. It's nine o'clock in the morning in South Carolina and it's already 85 degrees and there's no end in sight to this heat that everybody's been praying for. We've got it, we've got it. So it's a little warm in the Carolina today as we come to you. So I have to have my fan on. But I hope you're doing well. And I hope that somewhere in your travels throughout the different retailers and online sales that you have purchased one of these. Now that still has an inventory number on it because we offered these. This is Villa and this is port of call we had offered these at a substantial discount during one of our live sales a few months ago and we had a couple of takers but all in all what i keep hearing is what do we do with this well you're supposed to be able to load it with material and roll it. And if you're on a piece of craft paper or butcher paper, you can make an amazing piece of wrapping paper. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Judy. But if you want to do something with it, like really do something with it, what do you do? Well, I've been at kind of a loss. I've tried some different things. These boogers are a little bit hard to manage because in the pack, they have this awesome little rolly foam piece, which is great because it loads your material for you. That is superb. But past that, what do you do with it? Because it can be a little tedious I'm gonna be honest it can be a little tedious to manage well I took my foam roller off y'all I had to take this out because it caused me great anxiety not only did I have to keep one thing straight but I had to maneuver with the second piece and it was just not in my skill set so I have put this away and I have not played with it and I have been disappointed because these are really cool tools. But if you don't know what to do with your cool tools, what do you do with them? Well, I'm gonna show you this morning because I found a really cool way to change this and use it kind of the way it was intended, but with a little bit of a switch up because that foam roller had to go not my thing, not helpful to me in my life at all. So that had to go. Let me show you this board right here. Cause right now this just looks like a painted piece with a lot of wrinkles in it, doesn't it? And, and it does because this thing was some kind of tacky old 1960s scenic print but it's a huge solid piece of wood with just a thin sheet of print on it good morning y'all good morning lynette good morning michelle a very very nice frame and you know what it's the perfect size for the brand new queen of the nine 
I measured and I marked and I was like, oh, this works. But you know, the queen of the Nile can't just be on anything and she can't just be plain because she's the queen. So we have to treat her with a little bit more respect and give her a little bit more standard on whatever she's going to stand on. So the other day when I was getting ready to leave, I broke out this board, some fog, rethunk junk fog, and this roller. And I put two or three layers of wet paint on. I just went over and over and over and over until I had a good base laid down. And I let it tack up a little bit. And then, then I took this and I did a thing over here. Now you can't see it right now. Linda, good morning, honey. You can't see what I did because it's there, but there's nothing to make it stand out. And that's not cool either. So let's get cracking on this this morning. Let me, oh, let me pull my switcher back up. There we go. Let me show you what we're going to do this morning. I have my Rethunk Junk Classic Black Glaze and I have my Miracle Sponge. Have you gotten your Miracle Sponge yet? Miss Judy, you got some, didn't you? Need them, need them in your life. Now, I don't want, I'm gonna grab my water too. I don't want heavy, heavy to begin with. I want you to be able to see this texture and I'm gonna show you how to get to that. And then I'll go live later on and we'll put the Queen of the Nile on here. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to move out of the fan and I'm gonna spritz, just damp spritz, my Miracle Sponge because I don't want this saturated. I just want it damp so it does not absorb all of my glaze. I'm gonna grab a glove and I'm gonna put my little glove on so I don't get my hands all mushy messy. And I'm going to kick this over to a single view so that I can show you this amazing texture. Now I can do two things here because I'm working out of a smaller container. I can take my glaze and I can just tump it over and get some on there. Good morning, Miss Judy, how are you, dear? I don't want that dripping though, so I'm gonna tamp it back off just a little bit. You can't see this, but watch. Let me get this glaze on here and let me get my damp rag I may be able to do this all with the sponge. Wouldn't that be amazing and cool? Because this has had days to dry. Oh, and we're gonna get the texture of the wrinkles and it's okay. The wrinkles are just because there was a really cheap print, landscape print behind this. And I'm sure I'll find out later that it was a Bob Ross and that I just painted over one of his amazing and unbelievable prints. But you know what? Nobody wanted this piece. It has been in my store for quite some time and nobody wanted it. So I don't think I did any damage to something. And I don't think it was a Bob Ross, really. Are you catching any of this texture? Can you see it now? As I lay this black glaze in over the top of the paint that I rolled in, this is just like stamping into your damp paint, but with the roller, y'all. Can you see it now? Let me ooch you in just a little bit. I don't know that I can 
I don't know that I can. Oh, you know what? Yes, I can. Let me give you a zoom view. Can you see that texture now? Look at that. You couldn't really see it before, but look at it now. And you know what? I had not lost hope for these rollers, but it just took the right amount of thinking. Now let me ease you back out just a little bit so you can see this happen. Let me do this and see what we get. Come on, switch your work with me. There we go. All right. Watch this. I already rolled over this. On Saturday evening, this was the last thing I did. And I wasn't sure this was going to work, but I really have wanted to work with the Queen of the Nile, y'all. And I haven't had the right thing to do that with. And then I found this. And you've probably seen it. It's been leaned up over on the side for quite some time. I just haven't gotten to it. And Saturday I decided that Tuesday was going to be that day. Tuesday was going to be the day that we were going to feature these rollers and make this the new home for the Queen of the Nile. What do you think? Can you do this? Can you love this? I'm going to flip this board over. And I'm going to finish glazing. I'm going to spritz just a little bit of water along this landscape edge because I don't want a harsh line right there. And if you're working with Rethunk Junk paint products, you will see that water is your friend when you want to erase harsh lines. It's a water-based product. Now, the paint has a resin additive, and it makes it hard to work with the inlays. It's not impossible, we have found. It's just not simple because our paint is made for durability, for furniture and cabinets. So if you are trying to use a decor product that was made for a lighter finish paint, it makes it hard. You have to be creative and you have to be a little bit inventive. And I thought if I could put This inlay on this board, she surely needed something behind her. Now, that's a lot of dark right in the middle. I want to save my dark for my paint colors. So I'm gonna spritz it. And I'm just gonna work it. I don't want a harsh line right here. So I can erase some of that back. I'm gonna flip my sponge over and that'll help me take some of that material off. But look at the texture on there. Now I can go back when I get ready to do my coloration on here because I'm gonna use some paint colors after, after I lay my Queen of the Nile inlay over this. I just wanted you to see the texture and I wanted you to know how I got to it. 
I think it's going to be an amazing piece, Linda. Thank you. And I am so excited that there's a way to use these rollers. So let me, let me bring you back in here. Now, the one I have that I'm working with on this is called Port of Call. And it has a beautiful textural design. It has a start finish line, which I never use. I try, y'all, I do. Um, this is the image that you'll get when you do just a small, serious line. And this is Villa. I always say Villa, Bob Villa. He would love this. This is very busy. There's a lot going on here. If you use this, wouldn't that make an amazing border? LaDawn, good morning, honey. I think this would make a beautiful border. And in order, hey, Tay baby, in order to get to this, let me show you what we've got to do. I cut it, this plastic, y'all, it's just like the containers that you get at the store anymore. You better have 10 snips to cut this plastic open because the plastic is the most serious part. Be careful because it'll cut your fingers. It will. My mercy. There we go. Let me trim that down. There we go. I got the top open. So pop this baby open just like that. Just give it a good pull and then throw that thing in the trash. What I found with these is that there's a lot of resistance. It takes a lot of push to move these two together. And you know, I always say, it shouldn't hurt. You shouldn't have to push hard. And in order to make this work, I was killing myself. And that's not okay. If it's that hard to do, there's a problem. So I had my screwdriver out here and I put it away. So I'm gonna have to get my trusty drill. I've got it right here. I moved it out of the way so I didn't knock it over this morning. So let's take this apart. Let's, um, I'm gonna put my glasses on. It's just a Phillips head screw and all we're gonna take off is this foamy piece. I'm just not a fan. Take the screws out. Don't throw the screws away. Always keep your spare hardware. Right, Tay? You're always gonna need it. And guess what? Those are, it's out. Let me get this screw off. I've still got my rubber glove on, so it's not doing the thing. Gone. Now, I'm not gonna throw it away and I'm gonna put the screws back in. You know, as I grow with this tool, I might find that I can figure it out and I can do something with it. But for right now, it's not my thing. So I'm not gonna throw this away. I'm gonna put it to the side. I'll probably bag it. And now, now I have a roller I can work with. It's not as free rolling as a brayer but it does the job. It does what it's supposed to. It has the start and finish line right here. Let me get you in the camera's view. There you go. There's your start finish line and then you have your pattern. Now, when you're doing this alone and it's going to show a lot, you really need to be careful with your lines. I'm not really careful with my lines all the time. I'm gonna do the best I can. I've got a piece of acetate that I use exclusively for paint, clearly. 
I'm gonna scooch some things out of the way, so pray I don't knock anybody over. Y'all hold your breath. There we go. I didn't knock anybody over, did I? All right, and I'm gonna lay this down. This morning, I've got my morning mist because, wait a minute, hydrangea kiss. I thought that was awfully blue. And I've got a board that I had already painted black previously. We're gonna dust this off and we're gonna use this to showcase. Now, because I have already painted it, I don't need to prep it, but because it's dusty, we're gonna clean this thing off. There we go. You don't want to roll over a dusty piece, but because it's already been painted, you don't need to prep it. You just need to clean it. And it's been painted for a while and it's been shoved around and it's got a few nicks in it, but it's nothing that's gonna bother me. I'm just using this for a test board, for a demo, and I can always paint back over it. Or find something else to use it for. I wanted to be able to show you today how to good morning sweetheart how are you lauren i wanted to be able to show you today how exactly how to get started with this and use this amazing tool in a new way i know there are people out there who know how to use this perfectly i'm not one of them and because I'm not one of them, I'm like, well, maybe somebody else doesn't know how to use it really well too, because these should be in your toolkit. In any form, these should be in your toolkit. So let's work toward that, because when you have amazing tools, you can do anything. Now, I know you can't see and I can't turn you away from the board to show you this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some of this out on my sheet of acetate. And I'm gonna grab one of my handy paint can openers first because glued shut, yep. Show of hands, who really wipes their lids off, honestly? who really wipes their lids off before they close them. Show of hands. If you do, raise your hand. Lauren, don't raise your hand. You're a teacher, we all know you do. Just like that, it's open. All right, not a lot of paint because you don't want to overload your roller and I suppose the first thing I should do if I'm going to do this the right way is I need to just paint it that's what I did the other night let's do that let's get some paint on here this is hydrangea kiss from rethunk junk I'm not gonna go all the way to the outer edges because I don't wanna get it on my Queen of the Nile board. This is one of the only times with Rethunk Junk that you'll hear me tell you, go ahead and get a really good coat on your brush. Get a really good coat on here. and it doesn't really matter what direction you've got it going in. The object here is to get a reasonably thick layer of paint and you want it to tack up a little bit. Now I've got the fan on me, so I need to turn that fan just a little bit. Pardon me while I roll right in front of you. And I'm gonna turn that fan so that it's drying that paint a little bit. I want it to tack up. Let me get you in right here. Let 
There we go. I want to get you back in here and I want to zoom in just a little bit because I want you to be able to see how thick this paint is. You'll never, never hear me tell you to put a thick layer of paint on when you're doing the rethunk junk because you never need to. It's not the thing we do. You don't overwork it and you don't overload it, right? That's how you get brush strokes. And we don't like brush strokes. But in order to work this roller and get the impression from the roller, you're going to need it to go into something. And a thin layer is not going to get it. So we're going to need a little bit of extra paint on here. Just, just when you do this, when you're painting regular furniture with Rethunk Junk Paint, don't do this. But this is not normal. This is some crazy idea I conjured up on Saturday when I was unsupervised. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And again, I'm not going over the edge of the framework because I don't want to get it on my Queen of the Nile board. There we go. That should be a good thick coat. I see a little bit of black, it's okay. I'm gonna try not to pull the paint when I add a little bit more. It's tacking up real nicely. There we go. A little bit of extra. That's a lot of extra, isn't it? Good morning, Alice. How are you, hun? I know you don't want to hear us complain about the temperatures, but my lord, it's hot, baby. All right, now let's let that tack for just a second. Go ahead and grab your coffee and have a good sip. Are you ready for this? Let's see this happen. We're using the Villa Roller. We just took the foam pad off two little screws, one right here and one right here. So now all we have is the roller stamp to work with. And if you have not purchased one of these, I swear today's the day you're gonna want this. And you should get it. You've gotta have this in your toolkit. All right, are you ready? I will do the best I can to keep my lines straight. If I don't, don't panic, it's okay. I'm not gonna panic, don't you panic. And I'm going to try to start with my line at the top. Let's see what this does. Ooh, it's not tacked up enough. Nope, it's sliding. If it starts to slide, it's not tacky enough. Stop where you are. Let me wipe this clean so the paint doesn't dry. Just like a regular stamp, if it starts to slide, Stop working with it. Just stop what you're doing because you don't want it to slide like that. How do I fix that? Easy peasy, y'all. Little piece of water. Just a little piece. And we'll just brush right over that. All right, let's get that fan working. Let me bring it in a little bit closer. Here we go while I clean this up. Do any, any of you actually, do you have these? Have you seen these rollers? Who's worked with them? Anybody? I've worked with them a couple of times, but I'll be honest. I got them. I thought they were really cool and I tried to work with it and it's really cool but it's really hard to work with. And there are no instructional videos for these. These are first generation. And some of the first generation tools didn't come with all the fabulous marketing and instruction that we have now. So we just didn't have everything for every product. 
So I ran into, you can throw that in the trash. I ran into a tough time trying to figure out how to use these, but they're neat. They're, and I know the sisters had a really fabulous intention for these when they created them. So since we are unsupervised with these, we can do it however we see fit, right? We can create our own niche for these rollers. Now I'm just, I'm cleaning out the paint from in these grooves while that paint tacks up a little bit with the fan on it. And I'm talking, talking, because I want you to know that sometimes there are no instruction videos and you really are left to your own devices. And I think that's when it's the three o'clock in the morning aha moment that you go, I figured something out here. I think I figured something out. Let's try it. So this is what we're doing. We're trying this. Is it going to work 100%? I don't know. But let's try it and see. And let's learn how to better utilize the tools we have. That way, we're saving money. And we're still giving ourselves the ability to create and think about what we can create. Because I'll tell you, we need to use everything we have in our toolkit these days and make sure we make sure we are taking our creative time to heart so that we can stay happy and peaceful with ourselves and the world around us. When you don't have any control over what the world is doing, it's okay. I think this is tacked up pretty good. Let's try it now. I'm going to take my line. I'm going to roll it around. I'm going to try to make sure that's where I start. I'm not going to press hard, but I'm going to give it a little bit of pressure. And if it doesn't come out perfect, let it. Let it be what it's going to be. Smooshing a little bit down here toward the bottom. It's okay. Keep going. Uh, it's okay. That gave, oh wow, can you see it? All right, I've got to zoom back in on this. Because y'all, that gave us the most amazing texture on that side. Let's do it again. Let's see if we can do it again. And I'm not the one who's always gonna line it up right, but I'll try, I'll try. Let's do it again. It looks like lace. And it's smushing. There's a lot of paint right there. Oh, I'm gonna mess that up. All right, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna get out my baby wipes and I'm going to clean this off. I'm gonna move the fan a little bit closer so it, I just think that looks amazing. And it skipped a little bit. I'm trying not to press on it too hard. You don't have, oh my gosh, 117. My mercy, was that the temperature? That was the temperature, wasn't it? Lord have mercy, Alice. And that's like walking into an oven. I've been out in the West and it, it's like oven temperature. And it's weird because it's not so bothersome as it is here, but hot is hot and humid just makes it worse. So we broke 64 year old temperature record yesterday so staying in the house and creating is a really good idea it's a really really good idea all right i'm gonna come to this side can you see this side you can all right let's see if we can roll down through here yes oh it does it looks just like lace let's keep going 
because part of it's drying and tacking up and part of it's not. And that's just because we're live and that paint's showing out. There we go. Make it work. Not perfect, not, not finished, but you know what? It's a start. And it's a start with a tool that we don't give any credence to and we really should. I'm amazed at what we can do. I don't like that I have a line right here, so I'm going to have to figure out how to soften that line. That's the edge of the roller. I'll figure out how to soften that up so that we don't have that harsh line when we transition. And of course, as wide as this is, one, two, we should have only needed three runs with the roller, and I did four. I did four to fill in. And maybe the trick is to go this way instead of long ways. I'm not really sure, but I can't wait to investigate further. Because you know what? I have these in stock, and I would really like to find the way to use them the best way. Let me zoom this back out. I'd really like to find the way to use them the best way, and I think together we can do that. The roller stamps are available on our website. I will drop the link in so if you are interested in attempting with me to learn how to use this tool in different ways, I'll drop the link and you can get yours today. We're using Rethunk Junk Paint. We are using the Villa and Port of Call roller stamp from the IOD first generation. And I am going to go live again, and I will do the Queen of the Nile inlay on our first board. I'm going to seal the glaze on, and then because it's a charcoal inlay, we'll use our Rethunk Gunk decoupage medium. LaDawn, I think it is gonna give it a really super cool look. The texture over it, it'll be amazing. But just like learning how to use the Miracle Sponge together, and we're still learning, I'm still learning, but I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with it. And the more comfortable you are with a tool, the better you're able to use it. So I'm on a mission to use these rollers because I'm going to use the tools I have in my kit. I'm not trying to spend crazy amounts of money right now. And I want the time to create things so that I can be still and keep the peace in my soul so that the external forces of this world don't overtake me. And I hope you are taking that time for yourself as well. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me this morning for this little experiment. And I hope you will join me again. I will try to go live here in about another 30 minutes. And we will roll in the Queen of the Nile paint inlay on our large board surface. And I'll look forward to seeing you here again next Tuesday morning for Coffee and Create. Y'all grab yourself a cup of iced coffee this morning iced coffee to get through this heat and humidity and create something amazing today. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it and I will see